Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. I'm Simon of Sour Trees and today I'm joined again by my mate Kate. Hi! I know the way that I'm pointing there is right at your stars. You've done this on purpose. <laughs> I don't know what you mean. <laughs> if you've not seen my video with Kate where we talk about just read and have a bit of a chat, I'll link yeah. that down below. I'll also link Kate's Twitter down below. And apologies about the lighting, don't know what's going on. Change of seasons, change of lighting, but I'm not it's changing my where I'm at. Glow. It is, she's throwing everything off. What we're gonna do is the latest in my occasional series where people have a nose through my shelves, choose five books from my shelves, and we have a chat about them. You can troll me, you can... <laughs> the one is when I can't remember them. <laughs> That's always a really fun well, conversation. I mean, I'm, well, I'm intrigued to see what you will say about the ones that I've picked. <laughs> Shall I show you my first book? Get your book out, Kate. Good Lord. There it is, it's Ruby by Cynthia Bond. There we go. I picked this because this was on the Women's Prize shortlist was a couple of years well? ago. No, I don't no, I think, think it so. was. A book was it? Yeah, I think oh. it might have been. Well, good. Um, but I picked it because I really, really loved it, and I just think more people should read it. And I was sad yes. that it didn't win the Women's Prize because I think it's really. I, I just thought it was absolutely what was it up wonderful. That year? I th was that the same year as the. Oh. I remember. Know. I know that it was one of my favourites that year. That was the year that that awful Rothschild book was in it, and I didn't want that to win, and it What's didn't. That the talking painting. Ugh, just don't. This book, I agree, because it's about a woman called Ruby who's going through really, really awful things in the town she's in, but it interweaves a story of poverty and race with magical realism and sexuality. And sexuality, yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> I just think it's done beautifully and a lot more people should read it. I'm glad you agree. I really loved the way that it uses magical realism, spiritualism, um, kind of mythology. And it uses all of those things to rationalise this kind of really traumatic thing that they've gone through. Mm. And I won't, I won't say any more about that because I don't want to spoil it for anyone. There, we should warn people there is a lot of trigger Yes. potential if, issues here. If you are concerned about um, kind of racism, um, abuse related to sexuality. There's, yeah, there's, there's quite a few, yeah, there's quite it's a few. It's not, I mean, it's not, it's not a fun read. But it's, yeah, it's so it's beautifully written. Really beautiful, which is extraordinary to be able to write about those, um, those experiences in such a wonderful way. Yeah, so That's we both so. heartily recommend Ruby by Cynthia Bond. Oh, it's The Shadow of the Wind by Carlos Ruiz Fun. I just got the fourth of this not series that is a series, The Labyrinth of Spirits. I love this book with my whole heart. And this is a book that I read very early in yeah. my getting back into reading in my mid-20s. Mm. And it totally hooked me because of the cemetery of books and the yeah. mystery within a mystery. And oh, I once met him as well. He's a very lovely man. Is he? That's yeah. really nice. No. Yeah. The other thing that I love about this is that he's refusing to ever sell the film rights. It will never be a film. I mean, in some ways, that's sad because I think it would be extraordinary, but then it would never be as good as it is when you read it and imagine it. No. It just couldn't be. We read um, some of his YA together for Here Read This, didn't yes, we? Yes, we did. So Which I liked. I didn't love as much as this. I think the, the really lovely thing about this is it's so chunky and detailed that you can get totally immersed in the world and as soon as I... Oh, I just make a youth as much as Kate likes it chunky and detailed. I do, <laughs> I do. <laughs> chunky and detailed, he's back. So yeah, sorry. <clears throat> I think it's a real book lover's book. Obviously there is a whole section to do with the cemetery of books which comes back in the newest one and the characters themselves are just so wonderful. They're totally it's, rounded characters. And it's really sinister. And it also really, mm. really, really, really makes you want to read. Like you want to just completely yeah. get lost in that world. And that's one thing. I don't read big books often, but when I do, if they're like this, where you totally mm. get lost, they can be one of the most rewarding reads. I haven't read The Angels Game or The <gasps> Prisoner of Heaven. Yeah. Yet. But apparently you can read them in any order, which I think is so yes. clever. I can see they're all in, there. they're all in different time periods, yeah. So it's not like they're a series one after the other and they all follow on. They're just all the same world. But they all, they all interweave. They're all around the same world. They all have elements that cross over. And I think the newest one is where it will all link up. Highly, highly, highly recommended. It's worth, this is a book that is on like all of those best books ever lists. Yeah. 
and write but, this home. Yeah, for good reason. Yeah, for good reason. Thanks, Kate. Good choice. Number two. Number three. Three. Yeah, that, that was number two. That was number two. This is number this three. Is three. Three. Ash, 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 ash. Yes. <laughs> this, I blinking love this book, and I shouldn't on paper. I know, it's interesting, isn't it? So this is one that we read and talked about on our Here Read This. So yeah, this I thought was really interesting because there were very few books that we agreed on. But that was always what was so us. good about that podcast as well. Because mm, we could properly go to town, like The Martian by Andy Whip that we all hated. Um, but this was a real surprise to me because I don't like World War Two books at all. I, I, no. I studied it so much at school, it's almost like mm. the opposite of catnip. What is the opposite of catnip? That's for another time. Um, but this is it's weird, isn't it? Because it's sort of non-fiction and yeah. sort of fiction because as, he's, as Lawrence Bernay is writing the book about... Is it, which one is it? Is it Heidrich Himmler? I've got it the wrong person. Mm. Yeah, Heidrich Himmler. <laughs> it went in. There we um, go. It's all about an attempted assassination on him that went wrong. And, but he's writing about writing, which, again, shouldn't work for me at all. And I just loved it. I know, some, I know there are some people who don't like it because they think it's too knowingly clever. I but actually, I totally went with it. I found it really fascinating to have Laurent Binet's voice talking to you, the reader, directly, talking about the problems that he's having, the diff you know, the um, quandary that he feels that he's making a novel about something that really happened, yeah. and he feels there's he's got like a kind of moral obligation to do it in a certain way. But also, as he's researching it, is how the research affects him emotionally, mm. mentally, and also what's so clever is. You get so tense about this assassination, you know it yeah. failed, but when he's describing it, you're just getting more it's and more tense. It's actually incredible. And he was it a hot, it's like 40 pages, and then it turns out that that's seven seconds. Yeah, get to that point, you're just like, oh my god, yeah, I love this book. It's really good. Well chosen. I don't think any of these have been talked about on my channel with when I've done this series. Book four. Now, this book's bonkers. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Panopticon by Jenny Fagan, and this is a, it's a weird book. Yeah, I think that's fair. But I think it's a brilliant book. I really wasn't quite sure um, about it when I first read it, and then now I think I would probably like it more. Yeah, I'd like to reread it again at one point. I don't think I 100% got it when I first mm. read it. I still really enjoyed it. But in essence, it's about a young girl in an Offenders Institute, but the Offenders Institute is also kind of this weird, magical, weird, alternate place. Yeah. And you learn about her life and what's led her to there, but then also what's going... It's quite surreal. And I think it's, it's blurring the boundaries between what you know is definitely reality yeah. and whether some of the things are in her head. Well, also, it's, 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 your, it's reality versus hers is rea her reality. Yeah. Hers is reality. Her reality. And it's, yeah, sometimes she's imagining something happening, but then it seems to be really happening. Yeah. And it's it's just, it's sort of on that borderline. It's a bit like Twilight, not the book. I mean... I was about to say. <laughs> it's not like Twilight the book. It's like the Twilight time, where things are a bit blurry around the or edges. It, I think it's also a bit like, yeah, because Twilight is where, you know, when you've got that sort of light and dark and you've mm. got that line that's just mm. between the two, that... This book kind of treads that line the whole way. And sometimes I think, I think overall, I really, really enjoyed it and found it quite excellent. I think it baffled me sometimes, but a little bit like when I read Sarah Perry's After Me Comes the Flood, they're books that you, you allow yourself to be baffled a bit yeah. and it's fine to be baffled and you don't have to understand it because it is just all a bit surreal and weird. And I would like to read more books like that. I've, I think I've read a lot of books recently that are quite straightforward. You know what uh, like world you're in, yeah. you know the rules of the world and it's quite nice to be confronted with something where you're not quite sure how it's going to work. Yeah. I loved After Me Comes the Flood, although I've described it to people as a bit like reading a migraine. Weirdly, I heard after me comes from where I had jet lag and that actually really Ooh. worked. Yeah. Because it was just really trippy and, it's like and weird. There's a mystery there, but you don't even really quite know what the mystery is around. Yeah. You just know that Everything's something. a bit off and a bit weird. Yeah. I also really want to read, going back to Jenny Fagan, mm. I really want to read her second book, The yes. Sunset Pilgrims, which is set 
in an icy version of the future. Mm. But I think also the main character is trans, which I think is really mm. interesting. So she looks at kind of dystopia and trans and all those things. And I would like to read that. Actually, Lauren over at Ron the Books read that a couple of years ago. I think it's one of her books of the year that year. And really? I still haven't read it and I must. I have a copy at home somewhere, but I've I must, I must I try and find it. I've got of two. Part of the reason that I picked this is because this is something that you and Gav talked about on the readers a long time ago. Yeah, but ago. it's probably one of the first books that I picked up as a result of hearing Aww. you both talk about it. That's beautiful. That's a beautiful Thank moment. You. This is how, why books are brilliant. You get to meet so many amazing people through books. It's very true. Yeah, it's true. Final book. Last one. Oh, The Wolves of Willoughby yeah. Chase. It's one of my favourite, favourite childhood books. Um, I'd lost really my brilliant. copy, which was also weirdly the film Titan copy, and I don't agree with that, because no. I don't like film Titans. But I just think it is the perfect... <laughs> it's everything I love. It's like an old, creepy house. Yeah. It's got orphanages in London and grimy streets, and it's got wolves that can come out of secret passages. It's got Mrs. Harfax. Hardcastle mm. Hardfax. Oh, my name's not. It's not on the back. Anyway, her, who is kind of the, one of the most brilliant readers. Do you know what? Yeah. One of the highlights of my... One of, well, one of the loveliest things that happened in an interview that I did was I met Stephanie Beecham and I asked her about what it was like oh, to do wow. the adaptation of this and she was like, nobody ever asked me that and it's one of the best characters I've ever played. I mean, she's such a fantastic villain. Yeah, and she's Gerald so and James is brilliant in it as well. just completely cold. Yeah. And it's fantastic because it's a film that's properly led by mm. women. Like, I mean, they're not the nicest of women, but it's a book, it's a, sorry, it's they, a film. They are absolutely and then the book as well. all the most important, powerful people yeah. in that story. Because I loved it so much as a kid, both the film and the book, I kind of can't see them as two separate entities. Yeah. It's really weird. But I love that book. It's Why did so, you choose it? I, I, I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I chose it because it's one of my absolute, absolute favourite childhood reads. And it's funny because I remember it as being really big and obviously um Well also yeah, let's see the size of the thick. font. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's got big. pictures. It has got pictures. Can't go wrong with a book with pictures. What was um, she? Mrs. Slycarp. That's Slycarp. Like, isn't it hard <laughs> it's hard facts hall or something, yes, I think isn't it? Is. it? Hard facts. Um No, they're living in Willoughby Chase. Why do I wanna say like Hard? I mean the Mrs. Hardbroom. Oh, oh from The Worst Witch. Yeah, it's one of the first things. Um, that I read to myself um, and it's just re it's really exciting it was quite scary it's scary it's adventurous it's and also it's really, really I think it's a really feminist text yeah and that's definitely. gonna people be like how can you say that about a child but it really is because it's about girls saving other girls yeah. and yeah I just think it's brilliant although yeah. you do have the evil horrible women as well but then you have to, I mean, it's not feminist if you don't let no. women be evil shades. as well as good. Because men can be evil and good. They can. So, you know. And also, what I think people don't realise is a lot of people know about this. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people know about her fairy tales. But she's written all these wonderful yeah. adventure books. So Black Hearts, in Nan uh, Black Hearts in Battersea, Nightbirds on Nantucket. They've all got brilliant names. Yeah. Um, but they're really, really hard to get hold of. And what Actually, I would have a word. You love, work for Vintage. Have a yeah, word. Yeah, that one's published by Vintage. But yeah, my absolute dream would be for us to put out a Joan Aitken box set. I think that'd be lovely. And can you make that happen? Books like this, that if you've got small children who... And actually, do you know what? I think this would be a Not brilliant small. book to Maybe give like to young six. boys. You know, people do say it's difficult to get young yeah. boys to read, yeah. particularly if there's female lead characters. Yes. This is would probably, I think, book that trend. So yeah, that's that's properly taking me back to my childhood. And I recently read this um, mm. two Christmases ago, oh. and it was such a treat. In fact, it was the first Christmas here because we had the fire open, fire open. We had an open fire, yeah. and therefore I could read it curled up in front of the fire, and it was that's just a dream. real treat. It's really hard to find the DVD of the film. Mm, that doesn't surprise well. me. So. I think we need to reinvent it. We do. You find the wolves. Oh well, I'll find the wolves. You find I'll a train find the house. and a creepy old house. Yeah. In an orphanage in the slums of London. <laughs> There's an act. Anyway, on that note, on that random, random turn of events, it's goodbye from me and from her. Bye.